Good evening and welcome to the September 10th, 2012 meeting of BOH number six, Board of Directors. And uh, I'd like to start off before we move into business with a uh, moment of uh, memories for Lynn Corn, who passed away uh, a week or so ago now. And uh, most of you here, if not all, have, have worked with Lynn. Uh, she was a pillar of the of the school community for many years, I think 17 years on the, on the school board. Uh, also chaired the uh, WSCSU board and uh, was extremely dedicated to um, our schools and, um, and, our, and the kids. And uh, uh, if, you, if you worked with Lynn, had the privilege of working with Lynn as I did, you know that uh, she, she had some strong views on things. Uh, you always knew what her view was, uh, and you didn't have any trouble trying to figure out uh, what her position was. Uh, she always had the, uh, the positive things for the kids uh, in, in her heart, and uh, she served uh, long and well. And uh, I'd like to just take a moment of silence to reflect on her life and service to the board. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, some visitors. We'll uh, at least one visitor anyway. Mr. Holiday, social studies teacher. We'll move that up the order, but perhaps we'll do the clerk's report uh, and then then move to that. Uh, the minutes of August twentieth. Um, they were kind of just at the last minute, so to speak. Uh, did everybody get them? I no. Okay, so they just went to, to Ruth and I for checking and went back. So uh, we will defer the minutes of August 20th till our next meeting, since people have not had a chance to read them. Uh, are there any communications? Anything else for the clerk's report? Okay. So uh, in order not to Hold up, Mr. Holiday. We'll let him go ahead, and you're going to talk to us about a trip. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll get right out of the limelight here. You can stay there. You're going to be in the limelight a little while later. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I told you I had a surprise for you. <laughs> Actually, I requested uh, an opportunity to come by here after we returned last uh, June to say thank you to the board uh, every time I've come here, and I don't know if you've ever denied any, but every time I've come and asked about the trip, uh, you folks have always been very supportive. The only disappointing part is that I invited any and all board members uh, to come with us, and nobody took me up on it, although people were enthusiastic. Still, uh, I look forward to the day when somebody does, says, uh, does say yes and comes along with us. You'd have to pay your own way, just like we all do, but. Um, anytime, anytime, love to have you. We had a superintendent one year who went with me to Dallas, Texas to take a look at the Kennedy assassination. But that's as close uh, to a board, uh, uh, board member we've ever had. In, in Cuba. Yeah, in Cuba. One of those guys go to Cuba. That was not a student trip, but you're right. El Rondo came to uh, Mr. Staley. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wanted to uh, show you what we did over there, and I wanted to show you through the eyes of the students. I made uh, a huge number of unbelievable connections, fortuitously, uh, including with the political party Sinn Féin, which is, to a certain degree, known as the political wing of the Irish Republican Army. It fought the British Army and tries to unify all of Ireland. They would still like to do that today. This is an email I got from the office of Sinn Féin after we had returned. Alex and Connor uh, are both in this photograph. Connor is the first Sinn Féin member of the Northern Ireland Parliament. He's been there since 1983, and when he was the first and only member of Sinn Féin, he was completely ostracized. He was not put on any committees. No one would talk to him. He was completely ostracized. 
Today he's in power. Has some power. We visited with, walked with, listened to, questioned, cajoled with the Irish Republican Army veterans, uh, two of whom are in this slide here, one on the top left, one on the bottom right. And the photograph centering here is our students listening to these people. I won't insult you by reading what one of the <coughs> students said about one of the Irish Republican Army fellows. I'll let you read that. And this comes from a student who was on the trip. Both of these fellows were Irish Republican Army operatives. Uh, the fellow in the bottom right would still be in jail right now if it were not for the Good Friday Agreement of 1998. If he does anything against the law, jaywalking to shoplifting, he goes back into jail and serves out his full time. But the kids found these guys to be very meek, kind, grandfatherly, was one of the terms that the kids used. RPG is a rocket propelled grenade, and there's an avenue there a street in Belfast, Northern Ireland that became uh, a centerpiece of contention between the two sides, the Unionist and Republican side. And some of the buildings are still pockmarked. They're trying to restore. But again, this is another student comment here. How many altogether? How many students? There were 13 of us total, 11 students. How old would that gentleman be now? Sixties. How long has he been out of prison? 1999. He is Rab. And again, uh, another student comment. Kids are genuinely moved when you can get them in touch with people that made history. A lot of depth in those comments, mm -hmm. huh? Written by a student? All of these. Wow. I've taken them right from the work that the students did. Wow. We visited with John Kelly uh, in Derry, Northern Ireland. John would be upset if I called it London Derry, so I'll refer to it as Derry. John Kelly's brother, Michael Kelly, was shot before his eyes on 30th of January, 1972, in what has come to be known in Ireland as Bloody Sunday. And John personally, I've known John for a few years now, John personally took us on a walk of the parade group where the difficulty happened that day. Another student comment there. Bill, are some of these students graduated seniors? Mm -hmm. Most of them. Yeah, yeah. I think the Gilligan boy in the back is here as a senior. The rest of them is, have graduated. Yeah. This particular course is uh, usually seniors and perhaps a smattering of juniors. Social Studies Seminar. We met with Mark Dirk, uh, Durkin of the uh, SDLP, which is a moderate labor party. Just to give you an idea of who he is, he was the chairperson of the party, key member of the negotiating team. He was the impetus behind the Good Friday Agreement that ended the troubles in Northern Ireland. There is no more important person in Northern Ireland to the Good Friday Peace Agreement than this guy. 
He was the Minister of Finance and Personnel for the country, Deputy First Minister, which makes him essentially the Vice President of Northern Ireland, and a Member of Parliament for County Foyle for his political party, the Social Democrat, Democratic Labor Party. And he stopped by to meet with the kids. You can see him here shaking hands with our kids. And there he is in a photograph with our kids. The Irish are much more informal than we are. I told the kids no ties, no formal clothes. This is Martin McGinnis. Uh, <laughs> you remember last spring when the Queen came to Ireland and shook hand mm -hmm. with a particular mm -hmm. Irishman? Yeah. And it seemed to be um, symbolic of the end of the Troubles because the Irish Republican Army, Martin McGuinness, was the uh, a corps commander for his hometown of Derry at the age of 20. And so his organization was responsible for the murder of Lord Mountbatten in 1979 related to the Queen. And the Queen shook hands with him just this year. That was all over the news. And he stopped and said hello to us also by arrangement. He also said this. I'm putting a little pressure on you here. I come to Boston with some frequency. I promise next time I come, I will visit your school. So he may be coming here. I recorded it. I said, you know, I'm recording this. And he said, I know, I'm serious. So we can come and shake the hand, the shook the hand of the queen. Yes, you could. Yes, you could. We brought maple syrup uh, for everybody and uh, presented them with little gifts. This is Sam Collerin uh, presenting Martin McGinnis with uh, some syrup. Who the syrup? Uh, Harlow's. I'm talking how to get it over there. That's it. Interesting. Okay. Or the suitcase. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we met with Martin McGinnis, as you can see here. We also met with his wife. He's the Deputy First Minister, again, which is, uh, I'm trying to make uh, odd references here where the translation doesn't quite fit. Uh, essentially, the Vice President, one of the two key uh, leaders of the Irish political scene, Northern Irish, uh, today. And uh, we also ate lunch at his wife's restaurant. Uh, his wife is in the top photo, bottom left with a sweater on. She agreed to a photo. We walked in, and she was flipping hamburgers and making fish and chips and whatnot. He said, uh, you are the wife of the, uh, I spoke to Martin McGinnis, and I said, you know your wife, she still runs that restaurant. She pitches in and works. And I said, Americans would, could, could not fathom Michelle Obama, for example, with a little hamburger joint in Northwest Washington, <laughs> D.C. He said, she's a bog woman. She'll always be a bog woman. She's always worked. She loves it. And, She's been there a long time. By the way, Martin McGinnis dropped out of high school at the age of 15, and yet, several years later, became the Minister of Education for Northern Ireland. Here, Bill, I do have to point out, we do have a second lady who, okay, who's uh, teaching at a community college full of time. Okay. So, yeah, yeah that, that, that comes close. Pretty close. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, that's one side of the political equation. We also visited the other side, the uh, unionist side, the side that is devoted to Great Britain and over their dead bodies, will Northern Ireland ever leave its connection with Great Britain and uh, become part of an all-island Ireland? Mm -hmm. And they're epitomized in Derry by the apprentice boys of Derry that go back to a time in the late 1600s when a dozen kids, youths, refused to surrender the city to the Catholic King James II and uh, saved the city. So they're still remembered tremendously here. And we went into some uh, Protestant areas, areas where Catholics today even uh, cannot comfortably go. We were there with Joel Mann, also uh, a combatant in the Troubles, a former member of the Ulster Volunteer Force. And we went to places that I hadn't been before because on previous trips I'd gone with the UDA, which is the Ulster Defense Association, after the same things as the UF, uh, VF, but in a different way. So 
there are even combative groups within one side of the troubles, the unionist side. So this guy, for example, cannot go comfortably into the lower shankle, or he could be in trouble even today. My other guy, a UDA guy, could not take us into the upper shankle, because that is the reserve of the UVF. So I got to see places in Belfast, Northern Ireland that I had not seen before because we were with the UVF guy instead of the UVA guy. Following? Sure. Uh, this is another student comment. Is this like gang wars in this country? Yeah. So it's not kids. Yeah. Okay. Here the kids are signing the peace wall in Belfast. One of them signed right next to the name William Jefferson Clinton. The Clintons are beloved in Ireland by the people who appreciate the peace because Clinton sent, sent George Mitchell as the chief negotiator and he stayed in a hotel, the Europa Hotel in downtown Belfast that had been bombed depending on who you believe, between 20 and 30 times mm -hmm. during the trouble. So he and his wife stayed there to say it's OK now. By the way, Lady Gaga, uh, not too long before we were there, uh, played a concert in Belfast. And she just assumed she was in Ireland. So mm -hmm. in between sets, she put on an Irish flag. That's the tricolor, the flag of the Republic of Ireland and came out onto the stage because she thought she was in Ireland and a riot ensued. Mm -hmm. the, the concert had to be stopped. Half the people cheered wildly. That would be the Irish Republican Army supporters, Sinn Feiners, Republican Irish, and the Unionists, UVF, UDA, UFF, etc., uh, were furious because the flag of Northern Ireland is the uh, Union Jack. Another student my time right here, Steve. <laughs> this is a mural uh, in, in the uh, <coughs> Shankill area, the Protestant area of Belfast, a loyalist mural. Another student comment. Like most Americans, these kids had no idea that this kind of tension, this kind of difficulty was happening in the world. Or the war in Bosnia the disintegration of Yugoslavia, or what's happening in Syria today, which is a repetition of these things with different twists. They're not entirely analogous, but they're close. We went to Stormont, which is the Northern Ireland Parliament. It's like going to the um, Capitol building, but we didn't go there as tourists. Here's what Shin, one of the Sinn Feiners said about your kids. These kids were just superb. I cannot tell you how good they were. We met Alex Maskey. I told you a little bit about him before. Presented him with his syrup. Always had the students do this. They practiced, rehearsed a little bit when they were over there. Kind of relished in it by the end. Uh, the Lord Mayor of Belfast was the youngest Lord Mayor in history. 26 years old he was and his political party, Sinn Féin, and he sat and talked with us for 40 minutes. He, and his, his guy said he doesn't usually do this. Uh, the students' interest and their questions were penetrating enough, so he was very intrigued. He also, and everywhere we went, they thought they were university students. He offered us, he didn't offer us, he pressured us to a pint of Guinness each, and didn't realize these kids were too young and we would not have a Guinness, he sent his men into an antechamber down at the end of the, the hall here, this very formal hall, and uh, his guys were in the process of pouring Guinness. I went down and said, oh, oh stop. Uh, we can't do this. And 
Finally, he came out and he said, you know, you'll cause an international incident if you don't have a Guinness here. If you don't refuse a Guinness in Ireland, I said, well, we do today, Lord Mayor. I said, I'm going to risk the international incident. I apologize to you in front of your staff and in front of the students and everybody, uh, but we cannot have a Guinness. I said, these kids are underage. He said, well, surely you can have one with me. And I said, no, I'm sorry, I'm working. I said, why don't you have one with your guys? He said, so we can't, we're working. I said, well, we're all working here. We will not have a Guinness. On the way out, after the students had left, dry as a bone and cursing Mr. Holiday, I'm sure, but not openly, uh, the Lord Mayor pulled me aside and he said, I appreciate your principles. Would students have been allowed to drink Absolutely. there? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. The age, drinking age is lower. And I found this <laughs> every damn place I went. The IRA were looking for, the UVA, everybody wanted posters all over. 15 minutes, 48 seconds. Huh? <laughs> Is there a bottle on this guy? Oh, yes. I think it's half a million pounds. Oh, I was hoping so. It's, it's like white mountain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a big white mountain. Big mountain. <laughs> Do you have any questions? You grew up in Georgia. <laughs> Maybe we ought to save that picture for the next annual meeting. That, that, the bike. that picture is saved. Thank you. Thank you very much. What's the next social studies trip? Where are you going next? Um, I don't know. We were trying to go to Cuba. Nobody's getting a license yet. Nobody's getting a license because there's a Republican member of Congress who is saying that uh, too many of the wrong people are going to Cuba and sympathies are being developed for Castro and Cuba. And he has control over Little Havana, which is Dade County. And Florida is a swing state. So if President Obama steps out and does anything liberally, he'll lose the state. So nothing's going to happen, at least until after the election. There are 141 organizations that traditionally look for and get, by June the 1st, licenses to go to Cuba, medical professionals and uh, education, like Witness for Peace that Ron and I went with. Witness for Peace does not have permission. The forms to fill out now have gone from six pages to 103 as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know okay. if you know, I'm going to go to Montreal and fly down. Yeah, illegally. Yeah. The school board would love that. Have a teacher yeah. and students to kill the illegal team. And have something go wrong. <laughs> All right, I'll get out of here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Okay. Next on the agenda, we move into consent agenda. Is there a motion to do so? I move we enter consent agenda. Second and Ricky second. I'll give you a second. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We're in consent agenda, and we'll start with uh, finance. Okay. The finance map on August 8th and approved. Warrants 10, 10, 10, 11, 10, 13, 10, 15, 10, 16, 10, 17, 10, 18, 10, 19, and 10, 20 for a total of $414,426.69. And we met on September 5th and approved warrants 10, 22, 23, 25, 27, 28, 29, and 30 for a total of $146,195.64. And <coughs> And we also approved payrolls, payroll for August 10th, the amount of $466,539.09. And the payroll for August 24th, 
of $448,722.36. And then we met on September 5th, and we were given the good news that there will be a surplus for the year ending 30 June 2012. And then we talked about the budget review schedule, which is coming up faster than we think for. Um, I can go through the schedule if you want. Is that a, that's a tentative one at this, this point? Is, it, it is tentative, well, but when does it start? It starts Monday, November 5th with the middle school at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And these meetings will be here unless otherwise specified. And most of them are on Mondays. At least that's the way they're scheduled now. That they're, they're all on Mondays, except for one is a Tuesday and one is a Thursday. Um, and these, these meetings are, um, we, we hope you all will attend at least as many as you can. It's a finance committee that's really the, the budget process involves any, any board member uh, that, that wants to be able to be part of the process as it moves along. We have individual unit reviews. Uh, then we look at the, uh, the uh, overall budget, student activities, and so forth. And so we'll be pretty active as soon as the month of November hits with that. As, as, as the time gets closer and the schedule um, gets up. a little firmer, there'll be more information about the schedule. Uh, oh, you should come. It's great fun. And our next meeting is Wednesday the 9th at 7 a.m. Is that still? Yes. Okay. That's the plan. All right. That's it for finance. Thank you. Planning and policy. That's not that. Okay. Teacher curriculum. We met earlier this evening at 6 o'clock and we reviewed the 1% um, what we've spent so far this year in 1%. So we approved a couple of other ones. Um, that were in process, and we started the, looking at um, what things we want to get reports about from the teachers of the project that they worked on, and we're going to start putting together a schedule of those to happen as part of our regular TCC meetings. And that the full board meeting? Um, some things may come to a full board, but TCC will probably do some of the smaller ones by themselves without the full board. Which is what we've done. Which is what we've done historically. Last year, we started actually going to the actual classrooms and seeing some of the presentations. You know, do, during normal TCC time, we're actually going to the rooms and seeing what's going on, and, and that seemed to be a really beneficial thing, I think, for the board members. But it also was really appreciated by the faculty. Is that it? Yep. Thank you very much, uh, Dan's committee. I may just oh. ask a yeah. few questions. Will we be notified in advance when those are happening so that yes. we're not a member of the committee but we would like to go for the presentation? Do we have that information? We can do that. Okay, thank you. I'll make sure it gets out once we have a schedule. Thanks, Ricky. Yep. Okay. BAMS committee. Um, we met earlier this evening at um, 6.30 and we went over, uh, first of all, some questions that the Guilford School Board has related to BAMS um, that Ingrid is in the process of answering. Um, we also reviewed how the sum, their summer program went and the number of students that were um, touched by the summer program in one way or another, and it was a, a fair number of the, of the BAM students, some that were coming in, some that were going out, and some that are still there, who participated in some facet of the summer programs, which was really interesting. We also um, started to look at the, um, the administrators, administrators' work on renewing the grant 
for the Beams After School Program because they're in the last year of the five-year grants. Um, so a re rewriting the grant for renewal is, is going to have to happen by February. So we looked at that work too. Okay, thank you. And help is needed by anyone with the. Yes, if anybody wants to help with working on the grant stuff, let Ingrid know. Okay, WRCC. We haven't met, but I do want to get together with you yeah, after the meeting. We should have scheduled the meeting. Yeah, set up There's some things that we ought to be getting updated on and talk about. Okay, uh, anything else for consent agenda? None. Is there a motion to approve consent agenda? So moved. Second. Okay. Move and take the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. We're going to move on to administrative reports. And uh, <coughs> mix up the old go uh, from the other end of the table this time. How about you, Dave? Oh, gosh. And I'll be the other end of that <laughs> back at the other table. Uh, caught me in a humorous moment, too, but anyways. Um, <laughs> the, uh, it's a fairly short report, and we're really just you know, really getting our feet on the ground, certainly. But uh, as of Friday, uh, we're 321 students at the Career Center, and uh, they're filling up 755 seats. Uh, of those 321 students, 27 are from the sending schools. So that's one. 27. And we have the uh, a new person and law enforcement person in, uh, which probably the committee should talk about, really. Um, as I recollect that, I mean, things seem to go so fast there toward the end. Um, thank you for remembering for reminding me. Um, we, because of the fact that the SRO resigned um, due to his family difficulties, we also lost an instructor. And we hired uh, Leon Lasser, uh, who is a, a detective from Montague, Massachusetts. Um, he has been on board for the last two weeks, doing very good. We're pleased to have him on board. And we're very pleased that uh, Ruth and uh, Ron and Bob were able to uh, meet with him and approve that that hiring. Do we need to go formally any further in that or do we, is that a, still go under summer rules? Well, um, that was before school started, yes. I guess, technically, yeah. so it would be under uh, summer rules. Yes. Uh, but Ruth and I were uh, part of the uh, interview and uh, I, I would take a look forward to this film. I think he's just a fascinating guy and I think that I think the students will really be inspired inspired by him. So far that's you know holding up quite a while for Effie's on board. Great. Okay. Uh, the summer lunch program uh, came out all right. Came out all right. We're still compiling a report. I, I will I plan on putting together a formal report for your presentation in, in October. Yeah, so. Okay, thank you. BOHS. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I'm thrilled to announce that uh, Putney resident and BUHS junior Lachlan Francis was named to the State Board of Education um, over the summer. And we've known for a while about it, but the announcement just came out. He's appointed for a two year term. And um, in his one meeting, he's done quite a bit already. Um, He's arranged to have the next Vermont State Board of Education meeting in this room in October. Um, so he's convinced them to, to take those meetings on the road, though I think they have in the past, but never as far south. Um, Lachlan's going to do a phenomenal job. He spent uh, a lot of time talking. He was recommended by Terry Apple. Um, she actually sat down and convinced him and talked to him and, and really kind of um, really guided him in his decision to apply. So I, I have to give some kudos to Terry Apple for that in the English department. And um, Lachlan spent over an hour with me discussing uh, what I thought were issues in education before he went up for his interview. And then uh, the reports I got is he just 
you know, wild the crowd up there and has done a phenomenal job. So I'm looking forward to how he's going to represent students um, all across the state, uh, but also uh, bringing that state um, board seat here. That was started many years ago by one of our students, um, an alumni named Isaac Evans Franz, and so it's nice to have Lachlan come back and bring it back again. So we're pretty thrilled about that. Can I just add, he, he, um, he was one of the first middle schoolers, he's from Putney, that was part of our middle school leadership retreat. And um, he had caught me just before his interview and we talked a little bit about s stuff that, that Steve had mentioned. And it was great that he was appointed and he actually, we invited him to come to the middle school retreat this summer. He, he came the last day and spoke with the students and really spent just about the whole day with us. It was great to have an alumnus of that program come back with the students. Is he looking at a future in education for I'm not sure he knows. He's got a lot of interests, and um, I think he's going to explore a lot of things in high school and beyond. So. Um, we had a, a very smooth opening of school. And a lot of that credit goes to the teachers who really did a great job of welcoming the freshmen and letting them know that they're part of our community now and letting them know that they're valued part of our community. Uh, we did premiere our new grandstands um, on Friday night. And um, there's a lot of groundwork being done in the week leading up to it. And the reviews are generally very good. I watched part of the game from the very topmost bleacher, and the view is incredible. Um, so. They're, they're a nice addition to Natwich Field. And uh, the site works going to continue in and around that area. And uh, I also have to thank the boosters for their flexibility during this whole process because they spent a lot of time waiting for us. And you know, they actually delayed opening the den until Friday um, just so we could get the construction done. So uh, I'm grateful to them as well. Uh, one new face we have at the high school is since Deputy Doherty is on leave, um, we've been joined by. Um, Wyndham County Deputy uh, Brett Gaylord, and uh, he's hit the ground running. Um, he's a presence in the school. He's walking around meeting students. Um, he, I think he's going to be very effective. He's uh, very different from Tom in terms of age, and also he's a lot shorter. Um, <laughs> but he's doing a good job of really trying to get to know students and get to know teachers. Um, he's planning to work with our photo teacher in the next few weeks to bring a forensic photographer down from Burlington to kind of show the, the photography students a new kind of photography, where they'll look at crime scene photos and look at forensic photos and then determine what was relevant to the, to the scene and what wasn't. So kind of neat to see him thinking in that vein. Our open house is the 20th, and we'll begin at 6.30 in the auditorium with a welcome. And then uh, they'll follow a back to school schedule as we've done in the past. So that will be on the 20th. Um, also, that week, uh, we'll have 23 Swiss students joining us and two teachers. And they'll be here for um, a few weeks. And Maggie Cassidy and Judy Abascal are hosting the program. They'll be doing a lot of activities, including pumpkin carving and a potluck supper. And that will actually be held at the Grange in Guilford. And then we'll reciprocate that exchange in April when we have students that will go to Switzerland and be hosted by those students. So that's a great partnership that uh, Maggie has worked really hard to develop and to sustain. And this is the 32nd year that we've had a BUHS abroad program. So it's great to see that continue to grow and evolve. And finally, the art department is working with the Empty Bowls Project. And Liz DeNord is spearheading that. And they're trying to get our students to work and create over 80 to 100 bowls and the proceeds from those will be used to benefit local food shelves. So uh, we wish them well. I think that's a question on the bleachers. Sure. Uh, I understand that there are two styles. I know there are two styles because I sampled them of, of seating. And um, has it been determined which is going to be the permanent? No. No. Okay. Because I, I, I did a personal survey. Um, I recruited nine people and I had them sit on both the flat ones and the concave ones and six out of nine rear ends preferred the concave. Yeah. Just, just input. And my rear end would agree. Because huh? I sat on both as well. 
Is it okay. Well, I like the flat ones better, but uh, I was in the minority. I like the but does, they are, it, does it restrict seating or yeah. concave because you can only fit one in? No, it's, it's concave flat. front to back. Right. Oh. Yeah. So it's, uh, but it is incredible from up, up top. And you look across at the old bleachers and they look pretty puny okay. from, from over there. It's a nice job. It was beginning to look a little iffy when it was a week before and not much there. Okay, thank you. I have a question about the parking. I know that it's been explained, but I didn't quite understand what was being explained as far as different areas that are being restricted or sure. uh, redesign of use. Right. Is that area where, let's see, I describe it, you pull in and then there's the circle. Mm -hmm. That was closed off on Friday. Was that just because there was a home game or is that the new? Schemes. That will be closed during games. That's it. that's going to be a pedestrian area during games, and uh, that's a section for handicap parking. That's at the front, but then the rest of that is just for rescue. The rest is for, for people to, to walk around. Okay. So then, when I saw it, when I observed it closed off, it was just because there was a home game. Right. So right. During the day, game. that's normally open. Okay. Right. And then the, the area behind the bleachers is now fenced off and gated as well. And that's going to be used for pedestrian walkway. And we're trying to figure out some. We had we had one bottleneck with uh, the FFA have a booth as well, and they saw refreshments and where their booth was created quite a bottom like a half time, so we had to resituate that shed. So, but other than that, the traffic moved pretty well. Okay, Thank you. <coughs> Ingrid. Uh, we have had a. A wonderful opening as well. Um, kids and teachers have um, been fantastic. Things have been very smooth. Our enrollment is up by seven students. This was a year we were projected to dip pretty low, down to 250, and we're at 257. I uh, appreciate that it's going in that direction rather than the opposite direction, but we were anticipating low. Um, so it's been a great, great opening. Did you say the anticipation was 215? 250. 250. Okay. The projection was 250, yeah. Um, tomorrow we have a beams assembly at 9.30 in the morning. We do these uh, twice a year, sometimes three times a year, showcase what beams has to offer. Uh, the kids are jumping out of their seats to sign up. They want to sign up for everything, and that's not yeah. possible, but they're, they're very cute and very funny about it. Um, but it's very effective to do that as well. It's, it's our form of marketing the program, and it really does work. There are school pictures on Wednesday. Um, kids are looking forward to that. Uh, Ricky did mention next Monday evening is the Guilford Board meeting that I've been invited to attend, and their clerk did send a list of 18 questions that they would like to hear from me about. I don't know if you've seen those yet. I haven't seen those. It came as an email today. I'll send it to you. Um, nothing that I wouldn't have anticipated talking about. It wasn't um, really from the board, though, really. It was just from the clerk and the student, basically, right? I don't know if she was representing well, the wishes of the board. At the previous board meeting, they generated some thoughts. Yeah. So, okay. For the question about the events, okay. that's fine. They seem fairly simple questions. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> they, I mean, they're, they're what I would have anticipated they would want to know about. Uh, programming, you know, curricular programming, co-curricular programming, uh, lunch program, foreign language program, discipline, how we handle discipline, opportunities for kids to get assistance after school, summer programming, those kinds of things. It's what we do in the schools. Easy enough to talk about. We also have open houses coming up. Our grade seven open house is the night before high school open house. It's September 19th. And our eighth grade open house is the following week, September 27th. We, um, our students join their parents at our open houses and get a pretty good turnout uh, because the kids do come and that's a good thing. We want them to be there. In line with that, we have opened up the parent portal, sent letters out um, today. 
the letters went out, so you wouldn't have received it yet, Lori, but it's coming. Um, with login information and portal information. That's using our PowerSchool Student Management Program as an opportunity for parents to log in and see, uh, gain information about students' achievement and attendance, in particular, uh, teacher comments about how students are doing. These are secure login passwords that parents get. Um, are, do the, are the student, like the high school, the students also having access? Or? Yes. Okay. Yes, and last year we discovered um, that is a byproduct. Kids were very interested in going on to their own um, sites and checking them out, and that was great to see that. It was quite a motivator for them to be aware. We didn't anticipate that actually last year, but now we do. Our athletic programs are up and moving. Finally, we had a little trouble with football coaches, but I'm very pleased to announce that the Pratt brothers have joined forces to um, Chris Pratt, formerly assistant principal at the high school, and his brother Alan, who's our safety officer, um, have joined forces to um, coach our football team. So we're delighted about that. Is he recruiting new work sixth graders? To be <laughs> <laughs> he may be, because we could use a few more kids, and we have 31 only. So it's low. Pop Warner has, has uh, expanded their eligibility, and as a result of that, uh, have subsumed a number of middle school kids now onto the Pop Warner um, community program. So uh, we have lower numbers this year, the lowest ever in my memory. Yeah. But it's enough? It's enough. It's definitely enough. Um, well, we don't have too many injuries. We have 30 males and one female on the team. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but we're offering cross country, boys and girls soccer, football, and then the Beebs program is offering, in addition, intramural soccer and ultimate frisbee. So kids can play either interscholastic or a couple of sports inter intramural. Uh, many opportunities for them to participate. We don't cut at the middle school level. We make sure there's <coughs> a place for every student. Did they get enough numbers for field hockey? I know there was a big campaign to recruit. Yeah, there, there was a big campaign. Um, I, I don't know today what happened. I wasn't in school today. I had a personal appointment, so I don't know. But um, we are still running it as a club sport, if not a team sport, so that the, the girls who signed up will still have a program for learning fundamental skills and you know an opportunity to feed the high school program eventually. But. They're, they're very interested, and we don't want to not offer it. So. They may have gotten more today. There's signs in the, everywhere in the building. <laughs> Sign up for field hockey. There may have been some boys who signed up, for all I know. That's good, too. <laughs> yeah. OK, that's that's Thank the ends. Uh, we, we will have some student <coughs> council representatives selected for <coughs> attending the meetings at yes. some point, but, but not tonight. Uh, central office. All right, I'd like to announce the first uh, supervisor union uh, board meeting October 3rd uh, at 6.30 at Oak Grove. And I'll remind the voting members that's Ruth, Russ, and Melanie. Well, Melanie's not here tonight. So it's October 3rd at 6.30 at Oak Grove. I can't make that. So, um, is there an alternate? We do have an alternate. Does that be a receipt check? Uh, it just happens to be the board chair. Yeah, that's what I thought. I've marked it down. Okay. Do we only have one alternate? Yes. Okay. I know on the town board we used to pre authorize a backup. We didn't have a <coughs> so we would pre authorize a backup. So I'm just wondering, will we be meeting again at the board? If uh, Melanie's not you'll be available. meeting that Monday before. Yeah, the first. We do send out um, the agenda, you know, yeah. a couple of weeks.
couple weeks ahead of time, so she should get notice. Um, might be nice if somebody on the October 1st is ready to jump in if, if Melanie can't make it. I'm not sure. We can find a volunteer. What's no Mike's uh, yeah, <laughs> suggestion? I'll volunteer. If no one can do it that day, I'll, I'll make it. What day is it? October 1st. It's a Wednesday. The third. Yeah, it's the third. Yes. Yeah. Going away on the fourth. Uh, then my the rest of my business most of it is deals with new business here if, if I could proceed down the list here the SBA annual dues the Vermont School Board Association you have a dues that's uh, tied to your student population so it's an annual fee um, your amount is uh, just over three thousand dollars you've got that budgeted in your um, accounts so I would need a motion to um, this is for the school year. Yes. That allows you the benefit of any professional development, but also um, with your uh, interscholastic uh, sports through the VPA and, and any of those programs. And then your um, you have access to the um, Vermont School Board Insurance Trust uh, health insurance for staff. And regional meetings and an opportunity for input and resolutions uh, if we were to have them. You know, a, a, a legislative presence. A mm -hmm. legislative presence, right. What is that insurance? I was on that board at one time, I think. I met in Montpelier. Mm -hmm. Now, that, who does that cover? Um, teachers and uh, support staff. That you're covered under that now? Or no, we, we enroll in the Beehive in the Vermont School Board. And, uh, Trust. So no one uses this. Is this VI? Yeah. Oh, okay. So we have to pay the dues for you? To no, no, no. no. Okay. By, by being a dues-paying affiliate, it, it allows the district to access that service. And so the district and the employees pay for those benefits. Oh, I understand that. But if we didn't pay the dues, would you be? You wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to access okay. that, that insurance program. It's just another benefit. That yeah. they, Based on increases in the last few years that have been oh, yeah. surprisingly yeah. lower than we anticipated, it's, it's probably worth, worth it right there if you do the math. The average increase over the last three years has been about 3%, and the municipal insurance has been over 20%. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been a great program. On that note, is there a motion to? I move that we approve the payment of our annual dues to the Vermont School Board Association in the amount of $3,090. Laurie, second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions? Okay. That's approved. Cool. Uh, along the same theme here with the Vermont School Board Association. Um, some boards have adopted the Vermont uh, Code of Ethics for school board members, and I don't believe BUHS has for a while. And I think uh, we felt it would be important that annually um, boards should take a look at this. I know you've done the um, Vermont School Board self-assessment survey, and we'll, we'll do that again this fall. But this is just another way of, of thinking about your role as a board member and your role as a board in general. So what I'd ask you to do is just take a look at this um, between meetings and then if there are questions uh, we can deal with that in, uh, in if the meeting is in October and then I'd like to um, you know have the um, final copy signed by by board members so we'll have this on, on uh, yeah. October 1st agenda yes yeah okay all right everybody would study that at their convenience uh, we have an Act 250 uh, request, and um, the proposed project is the Black Mountain Estates, 34-unit retirement community, uh, restricted to people of 55 plus, so it'll be a nice place for some of us. Uh, there is really no impact on the student you're talking to. <laughs> Can we see that picture? How many children is that? <laughs> Unless they're hiding grandchildren, there will be no impact on the school system. So we would recommend that um, we just signify that um, there is no impact on that development of the school system. I move 
authorize the chairman to sign the impact statement for um, Black Mountain Estates? Black Mountain Estates. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Anybody want to sign up? Where's it going? <laughs> I have a question. Says, I've, I've already set up for Brian Green. <laughs> <laughs> the location is uh, uh, 46 Buttonwood Hill Road. And that's right off as you're going Black Mountain. It was okay, that. Farm it was all was part, oh, okay. supposed to be part of that development mm -hmm. way back with Scanlon and, and Loney. Was John Brunel's development, right? Yes, Brunel's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's the yeah. 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 sure. I don't know if the traffic Jeff is part Brunel. of our. Sure. I don't know if traffic is part of our is within the scope of what we review or, or a more direct yeah. impact on the school itself, education speaking. But this would not be well within obviously if it's not near our school. But oh yeah, we in have. Are you sure is that part of the analysis when yeah. we're talking about the impact? Yeah, I mean when Wilson Woods was being developed, there was a, an impact statement there and um, came before the BUHS board. It wasn't much of an impact. I don't think. We also get involved in that case as an abutter. Mm -hmm. Everybody who's in the abutter gets, gets into the fray. If that. Guilford wanted to send their students here, would that fall under active affinity impact? You know, I don't know. Um, but I'll tell you, every, t every time we've had um, either an industry business like the Commonwealth Dairy or others, um, that if you know, they're, they're estimating that it's going to increase our population by 30 students, um, it's, it's never a negative impact. Said, oh, we don't want this industry or business, or because it's going to add to our population. I don't think add 250 would. No, I wouldn't. Because I, I don't but, think, but no, we need to. I mean, we it's need not to a development. It anyways, yeah, but it's like an in-house thing. Yeah, it's yeah. like education. Right. Everything. And that 250 is really only a development. Uh, you know, so that wouldn't be the case. Okay. Um, and I th think just uh, an FYI, um, as part of our agent studies program. The Freeman Foundation, we've, we've received about uh, close to $2 million over the last 10 years uh, supporting the Asian Studies Program. We've been notified by Jafei Wong, who is, um, you know, our connection to the Freeman Foundation, who actually has supported these, these funds for those years, um, that the Freeman Foundation is, has been gradually reducing the amount of the grant that they award us. and. Uh, He's feeling like it's likely that it'll, it'll be one more year before it's eliminated. That's typically what happens after about a 10, 12 year period. We've been very fortunate. Uh, but he does recommend that uh, as many school systems are doing, um, essentially opening their schools to tuition students from China. And um, that's been a trend over the last few years um, that um, you know students from China are paying uh, the full tuition um, cost of host families and insurance fees, and uh, it's, it's pretty lucrative to um, a host district. So uh, we'll be uh, having a, a small team, Steve Perrin, myself, a few other people, go to China from uh, October 28th, I think, through November 8th, about 10 days, 12 days, to actually go to some of the sister schools that we've had exchanges with, student exchanges, to. Um, make sure that they understand that our program would be uh, accessible to them as tuition students. The thinking is there's probably three schools that we would connect with and if we could uh, encourage two of, from those schools, a total of six students the first year next year, that would be a good start and with the idea of maybe 10 to 12 students annually. Uh, so I just want to let you know that's in the works. Um, there will be grant money that will uh, support the travel, but there will be some other professional development money that we have um, that will dedicate to that as well. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> board chair report, I just have one uh, added kudo, I guess, to our, our students. I was Today I was up at a Governor's Institute of Vermont board meeting, and. Uh, we met with the program directors for all the various institutes within the Governor's Institute of Vermont and uh, uh, three different uh, directors uh, who I was chatting with commented to me 
uh, how impressed they were with the, the kids from BUHS. Uh, uh, they made a real impression at the uh, Current Issues Institute here at SIT, um, engineering, uh, and also the arts. And one of the areas that we're wrestling with the Governor's Institute is trying to get good representation from all areas of the state. And uh, it's, it's really uh, all over the place. Uh, as you might expect, there's a lot from Chittenden County. Um, there are a lot of kids there. Uh, but we have pretty good representation from Wyndham County, primarily from BUHS. BUHS supports the program um, by helping the students out. Uh, and it, it really, it shows because we, we do have a good representation in three or four of the, the different institutes. Uh, but I was, I was really pleased with the comments that were made about the, the quality of, of students that are attending from here and really having an impact on the Governor's Institute. And, uh, uh, and, and just to add to Steve's comments about Lachlan, I had a report, uh, kind of an insider's report on this first state board meeting. And, <laughs> and typically, um, students in their first, to get into this position in their first meeting or two are pretty intimidated and quiet. Uh, uh, but Lachlan was uh, really, uh, really got jumped right in and uh, made a great impression. So I think it's uh, uh, the staff and, and the whole organization here deserves to pat itself on the back for turning out some champions. And that's, that's all I have. Uh, we've taken care of all the reports. Uh, unfinished business, is there anything? That, okay. Uh, so we've taken care of all the new business, I believe. Okay. Well, is there anything else for the good? Oh, we want to talk about meetings. We had, we had left September 24th open uh, the possibility of an as-needed meeting. Uh, there's nothing that I'm aware of that's come up that would uh, require, since we will have a meeting that following Monday on the 1st, uh, so if anybody has a burning issue they think we need to deal with, uh, we will have our next meeting on October 1st. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Extensions? Okay. Thank you all very much.